Good morning, it's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you're here with us today. We appreciate everyone who subscribes and has wonderful comments. Thank you so much for all that. We try to talk about our lives here in Ecuador, you know, as expats or extraneros. <laughs> we, um, we immigrated here a little over five years ago and uh, we love it. Absolutely having a ball. There are some things um, that we have to talk about today that aren't pleasant, uh, but we do need to discuss them. We think we've awaited uh, an appropriate a matter of time. Um, we have uh, some terrible news. Um, a lady who we met five years ago or more when we first came to Ecuador, she did some translation for us. The notary in Malacados had asked her to come down and, and translate to be sure we understood a document that was in Spanish. Um, notaries here have to do that. So, um, yeah, so we met her that one time and we didn't know her or her family. They, li they lived up high in the mountain outside of Malacatos. And um, so uh, a few nights ago, um, she and her family were evidently, uh, you know, some of this, I, I please don't quote me on it because I'm just going by what I've heard, what Lisa and I have heard from friends. They had come into Vilcabamba and took a taxi home to where they live, and they live up, you know, 30 minutes high on a mountain outside of Malacatos, good 20 miles from here. And um, so, and then after, right before sundown, um, a bunch of men came and um, started beating her husband and her father. We're assuming it was a robbery attempt. And um, she tried to intervene to protect her husband, and they shot and killed her, shot her twice. Her children watched who were hiding. They had three children. Um, and uh, so it was a tr very tragic. Um, they had a funeral last night for her. And uh, can't imagine uh, the grief the family's going through. Our hearts are, you know, heavy for them, and we pray for them. So um, has the violence escalated here in Ecuador? Well, I guess in some respect it has, especially in the bigger cities. Um, where we have some gang problems and things like that going on right now. Um, we've had some home invasions here in our area. Yeah. Um, it does happen. Now, I do want to point out, I don't want to make light of what's happened to this family. It's horrible. Um, however, since we've lived here in the five, almost five and a half years, um, it's the second murder that's happened since we've lived here in this area. The yeah. first one was just a couple of months after we've been here. We actually kind of predicted that was going to happen. Yeah. Very Irish guy was very unstable and uh, attacked and killed a Venezuelan man. Yeah. And we kind of were sitting, you know, back just watching this unfold almost and uh, kind of knew this guy was going to be a problem. So, uh, yeah, that was a tragedy then, and this is certainly a tragedy now. Um, so, again, we don't want to make a lot of these things, but we feel like it's our job to make you aware. Um, we still pretty, you know, we, we feel safe and secure. Yeah, I, I still feel more secure here as, you know, opposed to other places in the world. I mean, I don't view the United States as being the safe place. It's just um, the current climate of the things going on in the world today is uh, making it unsafe everywhere. But I still feel a bit safer here. And, you know, there are things that had contributed to this violence here. And, you know, one of them, we believe the pandemic and people not being able to work have caused people to turn to crime to try to, you know, get money. And, um, you know, these are long lasting events, even though the pandemic has finally officially ended here in Ecuador. Yeah, but the the businesses that you, you can't shut businesses down for a couple of years and think everything's going to go back to normal when when people can move around again. It's just, that's just not reality. The economic uh, repercussions are gonna last for many years. Yeah. So we've had another um, thing occur here, another event that we wanna kind of address. Again, we're not experts on all of this. Uh, we're just giving you our take. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so please don't be too harsh about what we have to say. But um, so our president, President Lasso here in Ecuador uh, is somewhat of a conservative president, if you will. And he has had nothing but critique from uh, former President Correa's, Correa's, we call him, 
his, his people who are in the National Assembly who have been trying to get Correa back in this country for a while. Correa has charges out against him. If he steps in this country, he will be arrested and sent to prison. But it's no different than everywhere else. It seems like every country in the world, if, if somebody doesn't like what you say or what you stand for, they're going to stand out against you nonstop. Yeah, I mean, I get it on Facebook all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so President Lasso, you know, he is, he is, he, and I think what maybe broke the camel's back for the National Assembly was he um, issued a decree uh, declaring Ecuador citizens could get uh, basically a concealed carry permit. And uh, that just drove them nuts since Correa, many years ago, took away all the guns. Mm -hmm. And Correa was a very socialist president. So um, I don't think anybody will disagree with that. So yeah, so they really got mad at Lasso over that. I, I can't see anything that he's done other than that that would warrant this deluge of anger toward him. And they decided they were going to impeach him and yada, yada, yada. And so he finally uh, was backed into a corner and he enacted something here called the Death Cross. We would call it mutually assured destruction back in uh, the U.S. Actually, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, if there's a coup basically trying to happen against the president, he can do this. I, I wish more countries had it. The Constitution here allows this death cross, which essentially says the National Assembly is now null and void. Yeah. So they're gone. And so it means he rules by decree for six months. Now, at the end of that six months, all the National Assembly and the president is a whole new reelection. Right. So everyone's out, including the president. Everyone has to be reelected. Yeah. So it's kind of, in a way, a house cleaning. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think Lasso will run again, but, you know, he's said that I would rather rule um, for six months in purgatory than two years in hell, uh, was his yeah. statement. And so what he, uh, I noticed he issued a decree today. I was reading it, um, he wants to increase trade. And so he's, he's doing some things to increase international trade, local trade, increase the economy. Um, so he's trying to make these moves to make Ecuador better, in my opinion. Which now, I think all these things are things he tried to do in the beginning, but they just constantly attacked him and tried to impeach him just nonstop. And now that he's got him out of the way, I think he's moving ahead trying to fulfill his agenda. Now, keep in mind, we have to be very careful. We, we're not allowed to make negative statements about the government here because we are not citizens. Mm -hmm. so, um, but, so we're not making negative statements. We're not necessarily pro-Lasso, um, but we are certainly not pro-Korea. Um, because well, I mean, it's, it's like even in the States, um, we always voted for the lesser evil. So it's politicians sad. are politicians <laughs> no matter where you go. Yeah, and I think, you know, the general feeling here from Ecuadorians is that pretty much all politicians are crooked um, so or on the take or something. You know, I'm not going to debate that if that's true or not. At least that's the perception that, you know, they give me. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so now, you know, there was a call that if he did this death cross, that the um, uh, indigenous, et cetera, were going to have big strikes and, and um, big paro where they would block roads and hold the country a hostage for the whole six months. And um, so we're a couple of weeks into this thing. Okay, guard dog, go on. <laughs> but we're a couple of weeks into this thing and that has not happened. Yes. So knock on wood, we hope it doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it still may. It could. This is uncharted territory. Ecuador has never been here before. We've never been here before in this area. So we don't know what to think. We just kind of take it day by day. Um, we will let you know if we think something bad is going to come down the pike. We'll report sure. it to you as best we can. Um, there, I have been told that there are 27 tourists that were going to come to Vilcabamba that completely canceled the trip. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but let me say there's absolutely no reason to do that. Um, we'll let you know if there's a problem with travel, if, you know, roads get blocked. Um, so you'll reach out, you know, ask us, ask somebody what's, what the conditions are currently, 
before you book your ticket, we'll tell you. Now, let me say this also. This is something since we first moved to Ecuador, we we tried to help people with. Um, when I had my eye surgery thing going on, we had to travel back and forth to Cuenca a lot. We used the Ishkluma van shuttle, which, by the way, is a wonderful way to get there and back. And so um, we would have opportunity to sit with a lot of young people who were backpacking and who were coming to Ishkaluma to uh, to do their backpacker lodge, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so we would strike up conversations and we'd try to tell them, hey, a couple of things. Don't go hiking up on Mondongo alone. There are guys with big machetes up there waiting for somebody like you and uh, go in a group. And don't walk down by the river at night. Um, and so many people I've told that to disregarded and a guy I know was robbed on the river at night. You know, luckily it was only a couple hundred bucks, but and he didn't lose his life or anything. But right. um, but there are people who are waiting to take advantage of your foolishness. Now, most of these young people would discount what we were telling them. Go, ah, I backpack all over the world. You know, I'm at one with the universe. Well, sorry, there are people here who are not at one with the universe, and and who are willing to take advantage of anyone who's going to be foolish. It's frustrating for us to tell people who rent from us, do not take anyone but these two cab drivers, right. period. Now, it's not that I necessarily think these two cab drivers are the absolute bomb, but if something should go wrong, I know who to go to, and I know who to finger and who to talk to and, and uh, eliminate or um, accuse. So many people here are trying to tell you this information. A friend of mine um, had some of them from the U.S. come and rent his casita, he gave her the same explicit construction instructions. Mm -hmm. She got into Vilcabamba and she was here about two days. I guess she went to do some shopping and at night and just took a cab right there on the square, took her home. Supposedly the cab driver comes back with five guys. They take her money and rob her. So um, she left Ecuador. And so that's sad. That's sad that had to happen, but you really, really got to pay attention to these things here. Um, there are lots of poor people here and there, all willing to, you know, take your money if you're going to not not do the right things. Yeah, if you're renting from somebody and you're coming and you've never been here before, please listen to the people that are there. They're not trying to be mean, they're just trying to keep you safe. And they're not making any money by having you use a certain taxi driver, okay, let me just dispel that. Um, we do this strictly for security reasons. Now. That sounds like, oh, this is a terrible place to live. And I have to tell you, the perception is all wrong. Um, this is a wonderful place to live. Yeah. When something happens like a few days ago and this woman is killed, it devastates everyone in the community and many Ecuadorians alike. Um, yes. This woman had a lot of Ecuadorian friends and many of the Ecuadorians that we talked to are um, really upset about this. Now, I also want to say these home invasions um, don't just involve gringos uh, or expats. They very often involve Ecuadorians. Um, matter of fact, we see Ecuadorians, you know, get hit all the time. And Ecuadorians are less likely to say anything about it because they don't want to draw attention to themselves and they're worried that mm -hmm. some of these guys could come back again. And uh, they don't always involve violence. They usually are less violent. However, um, there have been some that have been extremely violent. Um, but again, there have been two murders since we've lived here. Before us, seven years ago, a friend of mine in a home invasion was shot in the leg. Um, he survived that. Uh, another guy I've been told of a Canadian guy here that got, got killed because he was doing some things that weren't very good, um, you know, crossed the wrong people. There is a bit of indigenous justice that happens here, if you will. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting to watch. Yes. Um, we first got here, there was some young ladies in a little village, Ecuadorian women, that had stolen a cow. And so they stripped them down to their underwear. They beat them with this, um, this plant, like stinging nettles kind of thing. I think they tarred and feathered them. <laughs> yeah, they, so they beat them with this thing. They, first they hose them down with water and then they beat them with this. It makes it burn real bad. And this is all in the public square and the police just stand by and watch. They're not allowed to get involved. And so uh, they beat them really bad and humiliate them publicly. 
and then they give them, you know, 40 hours of community service, basically, um, where they have to serve the people of the community. Yeah. Well, and just recently, I mean, with, with what's been going on, they've, uh, somebody came into a community that wasn't supposed to be there, and they were harassing the, the community and trying to take advantage of them. And I think they beat them up and shrink-wrapped them and yeah. left them with a note for the police. Yeah, yeah, I think they actually killed them, but yeah. Um, so yeah, there are some communities in the larger cities that are banding together mm -hmm. and doing some vigilante justice. I know the police don't like that because um, they're worried they'll get the wrong person, but they generally know who the right person is. Yeah, yes um, and no. I mean, even the police here. I mean, they've when they came in and they started um, cleaning up some of the crime. They said, be careful who you have to your home, be careful of your taxi drivers, be careful of your workers, make sure you know who's coming to your home. Very important. I, the president, I've heard rumor, is going to um, dispatch the army and they will essentially become a military police mm -hmm. into these large cities to start trying to eliminate a bunch of this. Yeah, I think more on the coast and more on the coast. Yeah, the bigger cities. That's we we see more of the crime um, in the media on the coast and in uh, the larger cities. That's true, but it it has happened here, yeah. and um, uh, I can't say it won't ever happen again. That's just that'd be a misstatement. It uh, it can very well happen again. Um, again, so yeah, we'll see what the president does in trying to help clean this up. I know the police here locally are investigating this and are talking to certain people um, who they kind of got their finger on, so to speak. And so we'll see what the outcome is. Yeah. In the meantime, we're going to continue to live life. Um, we do take precautions. We don't stay out late at night a lot. That's not our thing. No. Um, so um, again, if you're going to be out at night, make sure you take precautions and uh, know where you're going. and know your cab driver very important yes so um again uh we'll let you know of any future developments if we think it's getting less safe you know if it's getting more dangerous or, or less dangerous we'll let you know how the death cross works out for the president yeah and if all of a sudden there's some strikes and paros and roadblocks we'll let you know about it for today thumbs up see you later